A very good morning to you and welcome back to Life and Style Monday edition. That is Inspiration Monday. I'm your host, Mikali, and we are at the Westgate, the pop-up market. It's on the first floor. It looks really, really good. So if you're at the Westgate Mall, just pop up. There are many shops. Uh, I'm wearing um, an outfit from Style Loft Africa, Kamabi Designs. Totally, totally loving this. And if you're into jewelry, like this is the place to just come hang out and do impromptu shopping you just walk in and impulse buy everything anyway on the everyday woman today we're talking about leadership and not just leadership women and leadership and this yeah. is a country that is in like we're in the heat of it because it's a conversation we're having every other day people are fighting in parliament they think it's not two-thirds it's just a conversation like it's all of that and so much more and I have three amazing women with me. Karibuni sana to the Asante. everyday woman. Namna ka vizuri. Thank you. Mepitia kwa zena. Mepitia zena. No, I didn't. Oh, wow. You can do your eyebrows. I woke up like, like this. I woke up like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is what I'm talking about. If you've seen these amazing women, they're also part of an ongoing show on KTN called Miss President. The first of its kind that is propelling enlightening creating awareness and pushing women to places of leadership in this country i like it i'd like for you to introduce yourself to the people before we get to the thingy yeah. all right and tell us okay <laughs> all right so my name is Anne warogorokiai from nyari county I, I am passionate about women and youth empowerment and I am also a writer, commonly referred to on the online space as a village girl. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Khair Harun Mohammed from Garissa County, home of the Hirola, by the way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm the founder of an organization called Kesha Alliance that supports girl child education, youth empowerment, and women empowerment. Also. Beautiful. Yeah. That's really nice. Yes, I'm um, Nerea Amondi, okay. representing Homer Bay County. Well, well, yes. Say the word. <laughs> I'm a granddaughter of a fisherman. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, I'm currently serving as a nominated um, member of County Assembly okay. in Homer Bay. Great. Um, and I chair the Public Accounts and Investments Committee. Great. Um, yes, yeah, so I have a background in, um, in accounting uh, management. Um, I'm very passionate about women empowerment, so I've used what I know to train women, um, to link them to business. Um, currently, I have a water harvesting initiative in my constituency, which is Karachuanya. And yes, I um, haven't been eliminated yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Listening to just what you said, there's a lot of leadership, and I, I, it begs the question: Did it start when you're young? Were those kids were in Dakusema? I know you're also <laughs> organizing things. Kwanyumbani uko. When you, if your parent wants to go to the market, and I joined Nani Atacha in charge, <laughs> were you were you those kinds of kids? Because well, I definitely was not. <laughs> well, I'm the seventh one okay. of ten. But, but the one thing all through is, by the time I was two, I was bigger in body size uh -huh. than my, my sister, who I come after. And, and so I sort of had somebody to take charge of, you know. I really needed to take charge because I had two older brothers. Yeah. Then I had three younger brothers. Then I had two older sisters. Mm -hmm. so fighting for that space to be me was, was, was not easy. No. And so I think, then I took it outside the house. So I was always that girl who was willing to fight a boy, you know. When there was a fight, I was always front line, tiny but front line willing to fight. Yeah. And of course I had like a mouth, I was a mouthy mouth. mouth, 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 mouth. <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Really, that thing grew with me. Yeah. And then no, I, yeah, that hasn't changed. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I, I, I became a class monitor. Okay. Wow. Okay. And I was always in trouble, even with my dad. And I think every month I used to be beaten about four times. Wow. Yes. Yeah, even when I made a mistake, I would come and... If I knew I was going to be beaten, and my father was I have a case serious. to present before you do it. <laughs> yes. I, I, have would, a case. I would look at him like, 
<laughs> and then I'll be waiting for two reasons. First, for tearing him in the face with that blanket, <laughs> and then two for the mistake. And, and, and so I think I think mine yours is yeah, mine has been yeah, there. Yes, been there. Yes, it's when I started there. being in public, I think I started doing poetry when I was in class four. Wow. Going before the 500, 600 people to recite three verses in Kisumu Social Hall. Okay. That was a big deal. It was a big yeah, deal. So I, I think it started way, <laughs> way, way back. experiences so when I was in primary school my father died and uh, in the infinite wisdom of some of my uncles they thought that um, it is impossible for women to just inherit land mm -hmm. and uh, that pushed me to wanting to just be in that space that protects women uh, from mistreatment my mother uh, spent her last coin in legal fees just in fighting to get her husband's property back. Now, that inspired me to want to be the person who serves between these women who can't be able to get the money yeah. to go to court. And currently, that is what I actually do in Nyeri because I offer information on these kind of processes by helping women in their ethnic languages understand how they can safeguard themselves or even push their cases forward without getting to incur lots of uh, legal experience uh, like costs uh, in going to court and even understanding the, the legal language yeah. in a very simple mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then when I went to high school, I was very independent minded. I wouldn't want to say that I was naughty. I was just, I just had a very just indep like independent <laughs> mind. <laughs> so my, strong -willed. my high school principal decides that I have to go home for two weeks because of something that she says I did, but up to today, I still, I still maintain that I was innocent. Yeah. And on my way home, I had two choices. To either go home to be killed by my mother mm -hmm. for apparently now you know, <laughs> getting in the wrong side of uh, the school system, yeah. or to, be, to, 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 uh, to, to fight for myself. And so I went to the director of um, education. Director what? Council. Uh, yes. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I just walked up to his office and accused my principal of, of harassment and mistreatment. Of course it was dramatic because how can a high school yeah, girl yeah. get the guts to walk into a very big office and to accuse the principal of, of doing all like these things? So what happened was I got to go back to, to, to go back to school on the same day. I was chauffeured by the guy himself. <laughs> the big boss himself. <laughs> And I felt like a boss. Yeah. And so it got me thinking, hey, I can change systems. Eh? Yeah. I, can, I can make people scared yeah. and push them around. So that is what actually what inspired me to just be this bold person who is ever asking questions and afraid. Yeah. Because you know what? I, in, like in high school, I was able to get up. I was able to actually inspire a whole system to transfer principles. So who the hell do you think you are? I will raise these issues with you. Must you must have been a celebrity I would, I would, in school. I, I was big. <laughs> <laughs> I was huge. <laughs> like I, I was one of the most famous kids, but for the good reasons. Okay. Because when somebody was in trouble or they felt that they needed someone to just talk to, they came to me and I would defend them. And that has been with me all my life. I am able to walk into a governor's office and demand for him to employ young people and if he fails to I will stalk him on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter until he gets to listen to why we need young people in this kind of space. I'm already scared. True story from Nyeri County. I hope he's watching this. We still have something to talk about wow. after this show. <laughs> like why we still we, we still have low cases of, of uh, women and youth in government. Uh -huh. So I'm coming uh, <laughs> home next week. <laughs> that is for my governor. Well that, yeah <laughs> that you know that case um, I have a very creative mind. Yeah. And so I wanted to raise serious issues in a very humorous way. And so in the, in the year 2013, I 
created a page on Facebook. It's called The Village Girl Thoughts and Dreams. I get to address serious issues like GBV, like uh, youth empowerment, domestic abuse, but in a very humorous way. So, of course, I know they'll be watching the show. And I hope, I hope to make them proud, both in Miss President yes. and all in other areas of life. So, that's, really? that, that's my story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Anything close? Yeah, you know. With that, I can come back. <laughs> It's, it's interesting when uh, when you talk about uh, Miss President, yeah. it's like nothing we've seen in this country. I don't think we have. We have never had a show on TV where women will stand up and be given a platform just for them to yeah. just be like, you know what, let's see what they can do. And you have to go back there, do your research, come defend whatever it is, do projects that people need to see and all of that. When you heard about Miss President and coming out as a woman, um, Doing what you're doing at your own spaces, back at home or in the city or wherever it was, to just be out there and be like, you know what, let me just get on this TV show. Yeah. Let me just, yeah. I, I will do it on this platform. Eh? And what is it that you would like to see at the end of it all? What do you want to achieve at the end of um, Miss President? I think my, my, my getting into the show was, was a very interesting story. Um, around that time, uh, we, we had a lot of... Um, upheaval mm -hmm. in the county assembly and and my mind was so focused on resolving the legal issues you know i'm one of those people when when there is something happening and people are going to get arrested then i'm going to get arrested i remember she was arrested it's true she was arrested oh wow during the show oh no, no, wow no. after the show and then then I meet one of one of our youth champions in Homer Bay and walks up to me and said, Moshimiwa, we there's this show called Miss President and Homa Bay has very, very low uh, number of applicants. Why why don't you take these forms, look to it, see if you can talk to some of your colleagues? Yeah. So I'm like, hmm, okay. How did I miss this? So I read through and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And because I I came from the development sector to, to, to join uh, you know, active politics. I've always done community work around health, around education, focusing on, on, on girl child, focusing on women. So I was very conversant. Um, and even when I was getting into office, I was very clear, even though I wasn't elected, I didn't have a constituency, I was very clear on what my first year would be. This is how I want to impact the women, how I want to impact the youth. And then I thought, wait a minute. I have a national platform yeah. where I could go, share my ideas, and of course the biggest is sell your ideas to a national audience, mm -hmm. an international audience, and sort of go back to school where you, you need to think. And a bit of, 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 of an interesting background about me, by the time I got to high school, um, my parents had separated and of course I became a rebel. Of course, I graduated to being, you know, even the bully of prefects. Yes, yes. I mean, because it, I, I mean, I couldn't understand how you, I'm late, yes, but, but why are you stopping me to, to clean the corridors? So we really had to negotiate my way around high school <laughs> because I couldn't be sent home because my father would kill me. So I, I, I maneuvered quite well. I was in Kisumu Girls, um, and, and so everybody knows girls from Kisumu Girls. Then um, I finished Form 4 when I hadn't even turned 18. And by December of that year, I got pregnant. Yes, I mean, this true story. And getting pregnant, um, an older man, by February of the following year, by the time I was turning 18, there is also an out. I was eloping. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that I did. Oh, wow. Oh, I did. I, I, I did not just do that. Yeah. I had three other kids. By the time I was about 22, 
Uh, and there was a house for almost six years. It's, and I was like, oh my God. Oh wow. Oh my God. We're, I couldn't believe I was going through that. And then of course the challenges of marriage and, 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 and you bring in issues of being pushed around because you're a girl. I mean, first of all, you made a decision to get married before you, you were competent. a child. I was a child. Yeah. I was pregnant when I was a child. Mm. So even when somebody speaks of lowering the age of consent to 16, I was 17 plus heading to 18. I did not make a competent decision. No. So I, I, I think sometimes we lose it when, when we think that we can legislate some of the things. It is so wrong. I wasn't competent. So by the time I had three children, I was struggling through marriage. Um, I went through a bit of domestic violence. I mean, because I, I, I didn't know what was good for me. I didn't see my parents for almost three, four years. Wow. So I was closed out from everybody. <coughs> it was such a difficult time. And I, I'm like, wait a minute, at some point, I'm like, I have three girls. What is their future? So I started going back to me before I got pregnant. I'm like, wait a minute. I am the one who even got prefects to negotiate with me. <laughs> and, and, and here I am being pushed around. Mm. I'm like, no. I grew up in Kisumu. We are women. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Snap, snap, snap. It, it, yeah. it can happen. Yeah. And, and so I... I just decided, okay. There's a there's a platform for there's you. Something to do. I then I'll do it. To get out of this okay. house. Okay. And eventually, I went back to my father, and and I keep telling women, you can't have a conversation to empower one woman mm -hmm. without involving a man. Mm -hmm. There has to be some man that will be willing to move that conversation. That's true. For that, it was my father. So I had to go back, humble myself, and tell that man that you need to speak to my father. And I went there, and he said, you know what, my daughter. This is my mother. I was named after his mother. This one is not housewife to you. And so if you can't take her back to school, you need to tell me because I can pay for that. My mother went back to school when you were nine children. So my father said, three children is not a handicap. Yeah. It's not a disability. And that is how I managed to pull myself through. President, why would you want to be Miss President? That that makes you the guy we will all point at. That makes you the guy who will answer all the questions. That makes you the guy, the guy. Right now, the conversation going on is to Rudishia Kibaki. You understand? So all of that will be on your shoulders. Why would you want that for yourself? Presidency is where I need to make change. I believe in servant leadership. It's like it's always you before me. And the only way I can achieve that is if I have every other resource at my disposal. If I can command and make this decision today to influence change, then I'll go for that seat. Why go for the small ones when I can go for, you know, like shoot for the head because that's where change will come from. Look at all uh, countries where the presidency or the president has, has always put the citizens before themselves. Look at Rwanda, for instance. The education, everything is free. In Kenya, primary schools are private primary schools are performing better than the public schools. Yeah. Why is that? Okay. So I would take the example of Rwanda. The president has really invested in his country in terms of infrastructure, in terms of employing women, you know, yeah. appointing women ministers, sure. young women ministers. Yeah. Because there's a lady, I think she's about 30, 32 or something, who's in, who's in, who's in their position. So that's the only way you can, you can have a country that's thriving. If my ministers are young, if I can ensure that I give the most competent person that job, I have the power to do every other decision. Yeah. And that's the only way I can change my country. So for me, Kenya, Kenya, it's time Kenya took the female positions, ensured that there's a female president, and that's why I'm here today, Absolutely. to bring change for my country. Great. Yeah. What is the one thing that you would do if you were told, you know what, uh, swear in, you are Miss President? Yeah, what is the one thing that you would do for this country now? So first, being being in the like like in this space right now, I am demonstrating to the world about the possibilities of having a woman president. Yeah. That itself is still a function because in a country that finds it very difficult to actually picture a woman leader, us being in this space 
we are having this conversation to encourage our minds and, 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 and our school of thoughts to just bring about to loving and also appreciating that it is indeed possible to have brilliant women who are in this, like, like in this space of leadership. As a creative, my mind goes straight to what young people can do with their talents. Youth and employment, one of the main ways we can actually handle youth and employment is going within each person and what they have in their mind and how we can transform that into a business. If you're a poet, if you're a singer, if you're in, like a fashion designer, how then do we transform your talent into money? Because with each passing day, the white collar jobs yeah. are just going. So we really have to invest in, in, in systems that encourages young people to, to just move beyond being entrepreneurs because we are really stuck on this entrepreneurship talk to now activating our talents to bring food on the table. So I want every artist in Kenya to make money from their field. So of course as a president that would mean that in my, in my holidays or in my activities I am inviting young people even to state house and not paying them with food. Not saying that our president does that but I'm simply <laughs> saying that talent... Talent has to pay for every young person in yeah. Kenya. And this goes even to the ones who are a bit older, like our parents, and they still have something within them. We still can make money from what we have within us. Yes, that's true. Okay, for you it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. I'd like like a one-minute pitch, you know, convince us as Kenyans here and now to vote for you as the next president of this country. And that is your camera and the microphone. As a woman, I bring um, a lot of perspective. I bring a lot of um, heart into the presidency. As a woman, I bring to the forefront the reality that, yes, a woman has a lot of duties and functions um, in the community. I want to show Kenyans that I can nurture a life and bring forth a baby into this world. I can be that leader that can make the tough decisions. I will be that leader that will make the objective decisions. And so as I look for your vote as a president, I really want to tell women and the men of Kenya that 50% of us are in this space and we need to work together. And most importantly, I want men and women to acknowledge that we are not inhibited in any way. I mean, being in the academy and being a mother who's carrying a baby is important for us to see that it is possible. We have the stamina, we have the mental strength, so nothing takes away from women. Please do not take women who are having children into sleep mode because we are told we are otherwise not available, we are otherwise indisposed. I don't believe so. I think women in whatever state, in whatever condition they are, are capable of being the next leader. Let's go to the boardroom and I'm getting to state house as a woman and I want to bring that baby knowing very well that it can be done in this very country. It has been done in New Zealand. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You know you want to give me the mic. Drops mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think mine is working. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on to the show. When is the show? So that everyone out there will be tuning in to um, vote for whomever <laughs> and support whomever. But what time is the show? Eight, eight to nine. We're on KTN home. Yeah. On Wednesday, eight to nine p.m. Mm -hmm. Be sure to watch. Hi. It gets exciting with each and every episode. Great, and they've never yeah. been eliminated. Never, yeah. never been eliminated. So, <laughs> where hey, so is the motto? You have you have tasted the hot seat, so okay. <laughs> yes, I think it is. It, 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 all the best. May the best woman win. May the best woman win. Great, amazing, amazing stories here. Um, very informative, and educative, and entertainment. It is very, very entertaining as well. Listening to all those stories. My God, you. Okay, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have learned so much. I have learned. Asante Nisana. This has been The Everyday Woman with me, Mikali. And you know, on The Everyday Woman, we talk all things women. All things. The beautiful, the, the challenges, the things we are good at. That is what happens here. Every single Monday at 7.30 a.m. So see you then, right now. We're taking a very short commercial break. When we come back, we have Catherine Mwangi on Books and Blogs. <laughs>